Good morning, Bell Road Baptist Church family and friends. We want to welcome you to our August 30, 2020 worship service live from Bell Road Baptist Church. We're uh, The worship team is here and we're glad to be here today to worship the Lord in this beautiful place. I wanted to begin our time of worship by reading Psalm 46, God, the refuge of his people. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar, the kingdoms tottered, he raised his voice, the earth melted, the Lord of hosts is with us, amen? The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for Bell Road Baptist Church and our families scattered around this city today and friends who are watching. We just pray, Father, that you will be our refuge. We trust in you as our stronghold today. I thank you for the uh, musicians. I thank you for all of those who are going to lead us. And then as our Youth Sunday continues, Brother John brings our message today. We offer all this to you, Heavenly Father, for your glory and honor. We pray that those listening, their lives will be changed today because they encounter your word through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the youth. <coughs> Yeah. 
listen to that now. So I did, I put it on, we, Jack and I were singing to it. Um, it was when we were trying to do our schoolwork, you know, because we were doing it online. And suddenly, just, it stops pouring. And the storm had hit everywhere other than us, you know, from everything that I've heard from everybody that I've asked about the storm. So when I heard it, another one coming in, same thing happened. It, it didn't hit us, you know? And I just thought, whoa. <laughs> like, that's just all that came from my brain was, whoa. God, it's good. Amen. So, praise Lord. I praise praise Lord. Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I want to, if you're home or if you're here with us, let's give a round of applause for our worship team. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I might have heard a potential band name in there, something along the lines of the youth and their moms. Kind of has a, a catchy ring to it, you know? I'm getting a lot of shaking heads, so maybe not, maybe not. Um, it is so good to be back in here this morning with some of our church family. We hope in the near future to be able to continue and to invite more in in a, a safe way with everything we're going through. But it's it's time to get back together. It's, it's time to start coming back together as a family, as a church, and worshiping together in the same place. Um, this morning, I have um, just a short short thing I want to speak on about seasons. Um, here recently, I've had a good friend of mine. Um, his kind of focus for the year has been about seasons. And if I'm honest, I didn't quite connect with it as well as I have in the past month or so. Um, seasons were always just kind of stuck in my head as spring, summer, fall, and winter. They were segments of a year, and that, that was their purpose. Their purpose was for crops, and their purpose was for it to not be so hot in Nashville, and their purpose was for the changing of weather. Um, and that's just how it was stuck in, in my mind. Um, this morning, the, the scripture we're going to be in is going to be in 1 Corinthians, if you want to begin to make your way that way. Um, but seasons are not just segments of a year. In fact, when you look up seasons biblically, you see just as often, if not more often, um, seasons talking about a calling, a, a time of calling or a time of direction. Um, it is spoken about in ways of wheat and crops, but just as often it is a season that a person is going through that doesn't necessarily connect with autumn or with spring. In fact, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, um, it says to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. It's not just talking about when to rotate your crops. Um, in fact, seasons can become somewhat of a difficulty in our lives and how we deal with them. A lot of times of, in gaining of new seasons, um, we have seem to have a little bit easier time with it. Oftentimes, moving into new seasons is somewhat thrust upon us sometimes. Um, they are, are put into our path. They are new opportunities. They are new challenges. They are a new time of, of testing or of calling that we're going through. Um, often, new seasons seem to be easier to deal with. Um, in many cases, new seasons almost demand to be dealt with. They're, they're a much more constant, immediate thing. And oftentimes you'll hear seasons talked about as an opening of a door or a closing of a past door. Um, an opportunity going forward or, or something that you're coming out of moving into something different. Um, sometimes you'll hear new seasons portrayed as doors of opportunity, either because of a new door opening available to you or a former door being closed behind you. The problem is, what happens when you're stuck in the hallway between the doors? It's not the first time we've been in situations like that. In fact, seasons are a reality of life. Seasons are something that we deal with. Seasons are something that we will come across. It is inevitable that we will move through many, many seasons in our lifetime. Sometimes they're clear cut, and it is a closing of a door behind you, and an opening of a door in front of you, and the path is simple, and the path is clear, and the path is all but easy. Sometimes it's not quite so cut and dry. Sometimes we cling to a door that we don't want to leave, or we have a fear of a door that we're not sure we want to go into. Sometimes we may have multiple doors opening up before us, and we're not sure which door is the right path to take. Sometimes being stuck in a, a new, moving toward a new door, a new season, we have fear of uncertainty, we have insecurity, and, and plainly it's just an unknown 
We don't know where that new door will take us. Sometimes we're stuck not being able to close a past door that we're coming out of because of our comfort in that season. Maybe we don't feel that that season is complete for us. We still have work to do. We're not done there yet. We don't want to move on from that season. And sometimes it's simply just a fear of change. Change that, unfortunately, if, if you're still struggling with, life changes. And I'm not the same person I was when I was 10, praise God. And I will probably not be the same person when I'm 50. That's just the way life is. Life is a series of seasons and a series of changing. But in, as in many, with many things, I really feel like Paul understood this in between. Paul understood what it was like to be between doors. Paul understood what it was like both for himself and in preaching to others that he found that were in that same situation. And so in 1 Corinthians 3, in chapter 4, or 1 Corinthians 3, sorry, verse 4, there we go, it's been a little while. Um, it says this, For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere men? What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. See, the reality is that whether you're moving to a new door or you're moving from an old door, God is the creator of the doors. He's the one ordaining the path that you were on. He's the one moving and working within it. He is the one that has created the space where you are, and he knows all about the situation you are in. He knows all about what you're dealing with. He knows all about the past door that you are clinging to, and he is saying, child, I'm ready for you to move forward. Sometimes this even applies in ministry. I know it is a reality of my life as a youth pastor that there will be youth that will graduate high school, that will graduate from our youth group, and they will still not know Jesus. And sometimes it's really difficult for me to deal with that fact. I may have youth that are moving off to places far away, and contact with them may be difficult, but I have the ability to trust that I may have planted seeds, and there may be someone down the line that will water them. There may be someone down the line that will have the blessing of seeing my youth come to Jesus. And it may not be something that they have done, it may not be something that I have done, but it is entirely something that God has done and orchestrated through both me and this pastor down the road, this person of God who has spoken life into them. My reality needs to be, I can allow the season of that youth to pass on knowing that they too are going through seasons. And that a season down the road may be a season that draws them ever closer to God. In the same way in ministry, sometimes there are places where I just feel like, God, the work is not done yet. There's more to do, but God is saying, I've called you to a new place. I've called you to a new ministry. And I need you to embrace this new season and not struggle leaving behind it all. Sometimes seasons are really hard to move from, and sometimes seasons are really hard to move into. But in the embrace of the seasons that God has brought before us, he brings joy with every new step. Instead of saying, God, why have you put me in this time of suffering, this season of suffering? Say, God, I want to understand why you have put me in this season of suffering. Show me what you are showing me through this. When we are in times of success, let us not lean on ourselves and on our own glory, but say, God, thank you for this time of success that you've brought on to us. And Lord, show us how you wish us to use this time of success. Show us how to use this new place. Show us how to use this new ministry. Show us how to new, use this entirely new season that you may be bringing us to. And God, allow us to have peace in the seasons that we may be leaving behind. Not to be left without another, but to be left in the hands of a new harvester in that season. A new pastor coming in, a new, a new servant coming in, a new person that, Lord, just as you are drawing us away from seasons, you are drawing others into the seasons that we leave behind. We never leave a season behind that you have not ordained in the same way. We never leave a season behind that 
you don't already have a plan for. That youth or that ministry that, that we feel is incomplete, you're just choosing to complete through someone else. That they can receive that joy. And so God, we thank you for these seasons. We thank you that you are not a God that calls us to one thing and then leaves us there. We thank you that you are a God that calls us from where we have been into a new place, drawing us ever nearer to you with every step we take in these new seasons. We thank you that you are a God that calls us from seasons of suffering and heartache into seasons of joy. We thank you that you are a God that teaches us things through those seasons of suffering and heartache as you draw us into new and more seasons. And so this morning, let us not be stuck in the hallway. Let us not be stuck in a place where we are unsure because I promise you God is absolutely sure of the path that he's laid before you. And sometimes all it takes is us asking God, God, is this where you wish us to go? Is this what you wish us to do? Is this where you wish us to be? And take comfort in knowing that even though it looks to be a hard path, that I know that's where God is drawing us to go. Through this crazy season we've been in and this entire year of 2020, You'll be calling us to a new path. You'll be calling us to revival on the other side of this. You're calling us to preach not fear in the midst of this. And so this morning as we pray, this morning as we just thank God for the seasons that he's given us, don't be stuck in the hallway. Don't be stuck in a place of uncertainty and of unknown because God knows all things and he is uncertain of nothing. And we can rest in his comfort in that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the many seasons that you draw us through, seasons of difficulty, seasons of heartache, seasons of joy, seasons of love, seasons of pressing on, and seasons of pulling back, seasons of unknown to us, but always known to you. God, we just pray that you give us strength and courage to move through into new seasons that you are calling us to. We pray that you give us comfort and peace and leaving behind seasons that you will be giving to someone else. Lord, thank you for your love for us, Lord, that you are moving us to you, that you are calling us deeper to you, that you are calling us to a place where one day, Lord, we will look upon a season of eternal glory with you, seasons that won't change, seasons that won't end, seasons that will be just you. We'll join you one day. And so, Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you for teaching us, and we thank you for guiding us. Father, we're just so grateful for you this morning. In the season that we find ourselves in right now, Lord, may we just rejoice in you.